fourth point was that the multiverse is a perfectly viable naturalistic explanation. So there's a couple of things to say here. Um, I, I don't want to... I think that's a little bit glib, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, the set of multiverse theories that we currently have, right, this idea that what, why have we got the winning lottery ticket for the universe, right, all these numbers, we just picked them right. Well, there's lots of other tickets out there, other universes that had different constants, and... Um, in most of them, they didn't pick the fourth number right or the seventh number right, or the numbers didn't come up, and there's no, <laughs> there's no one there. Um, so we have ideas about how this multiverse is supposed to work, but if you look in the literature, a lot of these models are really kind of toy models. They're kind of proof-of-concept models. Though often in physics, you, if you want to just see an example of, of the sort of thing that might be the case, um, uh, an illustration of a point, you know, you, you, you make a what's called a toy model. So if, if you if you make something called a capacitor, so you, you, the way you would actually make it is you're trying to store up charge on two plates. So you have a battery and you these two plates. When you do this in first year physics, you make the plates infinitely large. Right. Right. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about the edges. Now there are no infinitely large capacitors, but that's a nice way of sure. dealing with. Um, so that's a sort of a toy model where you've made an unrealistic explanation uh, 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 assumption, but you hope that the some features of it remain when you actually make a realistic model. I, I, I don't think we've, re we've got anything like a realistic model yet. A lot of them are toy models. And in particular, you know, if you think there is a, a multiverse model you're after, well, you know, ask 10 different cosmologists to write down what that model is and what its parameters are and what its predictions are, and you'll get 20 different answers. Yeah. Um, but more, more to the point, um, the main thing about the multiverse is not whether it's sort of true or false. The question is, okay, we've set up this idea, we're going to think about other ways the universe could have been. Um, and we've got this, say, say the mass of the electron, right, and it, it seems to be fine-tuned. And so, oh, what if there's a multiverse? Well, all right, so let's do this thing, whole thing properly, right? Give us your multiverse theory, it's going to have some fundamental equations, and then you're going to feed in some sort of initial conditions, and then you're going to predict what the whole universe is like, that somewhere in there is our, our universe is going to be, or the universe is like ours, so there's some statistical property of what you think the electron mass is going to be. But the only way that's going to work is if the electron mass is some sort of variable. It's going to be changed from here to there, and so it's going to be something dynamic in this, this super equation you're going to give to us. And so it, you, you've explained the fine-tuning of the, the electron mass precisely by making it no longer a fundamental constant. It's now just one of those environmental constants, like the distance from the Earth to the Sun or something like that. And, and so what you've really done is, yeah, you've, you've, you've shown why the electron mass around here, maybe if you had one of these models that works, why the electron yeah. mass <laughs> allows for life. But now the, the question we're trying to get at is what, what other ways could the universe have been? And so you've just shifted the arena again, like the previous question. We, we now, we're not going to ask those questions about our sort of local physics, which is the best physics we have now. We've now got this uber theory that you've given us, and we're going to go and ask that theory, all right, what other ways could the whole multiverse have been? And um, it's entirely possible that the fine-tuning we see in our local conditions of the Earth and the Sun, which sort of then turn into the, the fine-tuning of the fundamental constants that we know of our universe and the initial conditions, it just turns into the, the fine-tuning of the parameters of the multiverse model. You wouldn't need to fine-tune the electron mass because it's not a fundamental constant now anyway, but there are other, there must be other constants or something up there. Um, and, you know, if there are, we'll just change the form of the equation because we just want to know what other ways the universe could have been. So the problem with the multiverse is, A, we don't really have a theory that we can throw at it properly, but in particular we don't have a theory where we can do the sort of what other way could the universe have been um, thought experiment that we want to do. And so it's not in any sort of state to... It's not that we're, we've got the multiverse versus God. We've got this. We've got this. Comp we've got this. This sort of um, thought experiment about other ways the universe could have been. And in in our arena of the best physics we have, it's going badly for the naturalists. So they're thinking, all right, let's let's go over to this different arena and have a rematch. And so it's not that I think it's either the multiverse or God. You know, maybe both of them are true. That's fine. Sure. Um, it, it's whether when we get to this new arena and have this rematch between naturalism and theism, whether it's going to turn out differently to the way it's turning out around here. And we don't have a multiverse theory that can tell us the answer to that. And it, it would be pure assumption to say, oh, this unknown theory is when we do the rematch up there, everything's going to be fine for naturalism. That's just pure assumption. Yeah, there are theists like Don Page, the mm. physicist who believe he thinks the multiverse is probably likely yeah, sure. on theism. 
But the key question is, is it a good explanation to fine tuning? And it yeah. seems that because we don't have a good multiverse theory, it's really hard for them to claim that it does away with fine tuning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it but just, it might also be hard for us to say that you know we we don't know for sure that there there might be a natural explanation, a multiverse yeah. explanation that does away with the fine tuning argument. But we, I don't think it should be assumed. It seems like this is still evidence yeah. for God until we have it, a, a good theory. It's a bit like the previous one, you know, something we don't know might sure. tell us that what we think we know is actually misleading evidence. Well, sure, that's always the case, <laughs> you know, and you know we'll deal with that when we get to it. And certainly where multiverse theories are now, it's not showing that at all. And it seems like for the multiverse to be an ex a good explanation of fine-tuning, there are a number of assumptions, not just that there are other universes, not just that they change some of the parameters, but they got to change an awful, they got to change all the finely tuned yeah. ones, or mo most of them anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, string theory could, could do that. We, we were told by string theorists. <laughs> yeah, I'm told. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you know, who's to say that all of these are necessarily mm -hmm. dynamical parameters in some kind of multiverse scenario? To begin with, there's a number of assumptions that we don't have evidence for. Is, I yeah. guess, all, the only point I'm trying to make. Good.